people with asthma, children, adults with asthma, very common condition. Um, in the Western world, it's probably about seven to 10% of the population. And the interesting thing about asthma is that it's not just isolated to the lungs. People with asthma don't just have asthma. If you have inflammation of your lungs, that inflammation is likely to travel up to the nose. Or if you have inflammation and congestion of your nose, that will likely travel down to your lungs. It's a unified airway. I know when you go to a hospital, if you have a problem with the nose, you're going to an ear, nose and throat doctor. And if you have a problem with your lungs, you're going to a pulmonologist or a respiratory consultant. But in actual fact, there's only one airway. The nose, the nasal cavity, the throat, the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles, the diaphragm, it's all linked. If there's a problem with one aspect of the airway, there's also a problem with the other. So people with asthma don't just have inflammation of the lungs, they also have a greater tendency towards nasal obstruction. And if your nose is stuffy, it's not just isolated to your nose. You also are 1.8 times more likely to have a sleep problem. So people with asthma also have nasal congestion in general. And because of nasal congestion, they are breathing through an open mouth and they are twice as likely or almost twice as likely to have a sleep problem. Snoring, resistance to breathing during sleep could be hypopnea, or they could have complete stopping of the breath during sleep called an apnea. So you might notice that your partner with asthma, or you might even notice it yourself. You're asleep and then you wake up and you're literally gasping for air. And what might that be? Well, it's quite common that obstructive sleep apnea is synonymous and highly related with asthma severity. As asthma severity increases, so does the risk of obstructive sleep apnea. And obstructive sleep apnea is when the upper airway collapses during sleep. There's four sites at which the airway can collapse. One is the soft palate falling back into the throat. One is the tongue. One is the epiglottis falling into the throat and also the throat itself collapses. Obstructive sleep apnea, not a good condition for overall health. It's linked with many, many other conditions, um, including dementia, fibromyalgia, um, metabolic conditions. It's also linked with cardiovascular issues, high blood pressure, for example. So when we are working with somebody with asthma, it's not just enough to take medication. Medication isn't helping to restore nasal breathing. Medication isn't teaching that person to slow down their breathing. And I have to say, People with asthma are generally let down. I had asthma 20 years. I was an open mouth breather for 20 years. Not one person within the healthcare profession encouraged me to breathe through my nose. You might have asthma. How many times have you been encouraged? Breathe through your nose. It makes sense for somebody with asthma to breathe through their nose. Why? Because your nose warms the air, moistens the air, filters the air, brings nitric oxide into the lower airways. All of these things help open up the airways. Instead, children with asthma, adults with asthma, they're just allowed, go around with your mouths open, breathe as much air as you can through the mouth. No attention paid to nasal breathing whatsoever. I have to say, I find it a little bit bizarre. It's almost as if there's an urge or there's a need for people with asthma to keep feeding their condition. And that's what they are doing as long as they breathe through their mouth. If you have your mouth open during rest, if you have your mouth open during physical exercise, and if you wake up with a dry mouth in the morning, you're not helping your asthma. So I would say is, and this is not a lecture, this is just sometimes a little bit of frustration comes out because I've been in this field for 20 years. There's over 20 clinical trials looking at the benefits of nose breathing and asthma. And I mean benefits in that you can have, some clinical trials have showed up to a 50% reduction in the need for inhaled corticosteroid medication within three to six months. That's not just a benefit. That's improved asthma control. That's reduced need for medication. And that's a far better quality of life for that person with asthma. And I said, it's not just about asthma. I had asthma, but I also had a permanently and chronically stuffy nose. I had an operation on my nose in 1994. The good surgeon never told me to breathe through it. So from 1994, 96, 
97, 98 I kept him out breathing. So the nasal obstruction, the treatment of the nose didn't really give me that many benefits because I wasn't using it. So it's all about restoring nasal breathing for somebody with asthma to improve their lungs, to improve their nose, to improve their sleep, to improve their mind. Because if you have your mouth open and if you're typically, you know, a little bit wheezy or you have some symptoms with asthma, your breathing will tend to be fast, upper chest, that's going to impact your sleep, that's going to impact your physical exercise, that's going to impact your emotions. If you're breathing fast in upper chest, you're not likely to be as calm as what you should be. So I would say, if you are somebody with asthma, or if your child has asthma, start paying attention to how they are breathing. There are very simple tools, breathing exercises to help restore nasal breathing, to help open up the nose. You can decongest your nose in about five minutes. And the more you breathe through it, the more your nose remains open. And as I said, we cannot afford not to do this. I know this is not on the agenda of most respiratory consultants. It's not on the agenda of most general practitioners. I don't think they're aware of the importance of nasal breathing for asthma. I don't think they've read the trials. They haven't been teaching their patients. You know, for us to make advancements here, I would love, you know, if somebody seen what I have seen over the last 20 years, there'd be a no doubt of the importance of nasal breathing. And nasal breathing is paramount if we are going to help people with asthma, both children and adults.